Good morning. Welcome to this morning's webinar. Today's topic is effective field communication tools. So today's webinar is sponsored by Computeries. Uh, we're proud to be a, a part of Allied Construction Industries, so we're very happy to be uh, presenting today's webinar. I'm John Mivers, the president of Computeries Software. Glad to be here this morning, and uh, we certainly appreciate the opportunity to do these webinars in conjunction with ACI. So as I mentioned, today's topic is going to be effective field communication tools. And in today's world, there's you know, a number of different tools we can use. Um, you know, and I think kind of to understand where we're at today, we almost need to go back and take a look at where we've been. And you know, not, uh, not knowing you know, you know, the, the age maybe of the members of the audience today, some of us that are old enough to remember, and I'll certainly uh, date myself here, but um, you know, we remember time before we had any of the technology that we have today, and you know, there, there was no effective field communication tools like we have today. So we're going to kind of take just a, a quick uh, look at the past and see where we've come from, and then we'll kind of look and discuss some of the things that are available today. And I think, you know, one thing we would all agree that, you know, we need to be able to effectively communicate with our field personnel, and that's going to improve our productivity and, and you know, our, and our efficiency. So, you know, we'll kind of take a look at the, you know, the ghost of technology past, and, and you know, I'll, I'll kind of, you know, share a couple stories of some of the technology things that I've seen and I you know I grew up uh, you know working in construction when I was when I was you know quite a bit younger and you know I, that goes back probably you know 26 or 7 years now and you know before cell phones before before all the things that we have today and you know so I've seen some of the things and, and where we came from and you know when I started in construction you know if we wanted to go out and talk to our personnel in the field there was one way to do it we get in the pickup truck and we drive out to the field I mean that was that was the extent of communicating with the field. If you wanted to go out and talk to the field, you had to go out, either have them come in or you had to go out and talk to them. So obviously not a very efficient way. If we had a problem, it wasn't, you know, pick up the phone, you know, call our superintendent on the phone. It was let's get in the car or the truck and drive out to the job site and, and communicate that. So there was no way to reach our field personnel. Service techs, you know, imagine for those that do service work, not being able to communicate with your service techs real time. They had to come in in the morning, they had to get a, a, a physical hard copy of a work order, take that out to the field. So, you know, we're often, you know, often we were working blind in the office because we didn't know what was going on out in the field. We didn't have real time communication. You know, we had to, you know, we had to clock in and clock out, or we had to physically transport timesheets that, you know, the people had to drop them off, bring them to the office. Once again, you know, imagine the, you know, not only the paperwork nightmare, we're, you know, we're going to talk in a little bit today about the, you know, efficient ways we can enter time in the field. Um, you know, I remember, you know, a time when, you know, just the fact that they could fax the timesheets in from the field was a, was a huge improvement. Well, now, you know, today, go to 2015, you know, now they can do it remotely from their smartphone, you know, from their, you know, from their iPad, from their, their tablet, you know, a much more efficient way. But, you know, go back to the, the very early days before any of this technology existed, and they were manually filling out a timesheet, and somebody had to drive those timesheets into the office, or somebody had to go out in the field and pick them up, or they had to call them in if they had access to, you know, to a phone. So, you know, if you had a job trailer with a, tele <coughs> excuse me, a telephone, you could at least call them in. So obviously, you know, not a very efficient way. And, and if you think about, you know, and, and we've done some, some webinars in the past and talking about job productivity and how just a very small increase in production in the field leads to a huge increase in your bottom line as a contractor. And, and all these things take time. You know, if we have to spend extra time doing paperwork and, you know, the guys are spending, <clears throat> excuse me, The guys are spending extra time doing paperwork in the field. They're not performing the work in the field that they need to be. You know, if you had, if you did have an emergency before, you know, before cell phones, you had to help. You know, hope you could find a telephone if you needed to call the office. If you had, uh, you know, if you had issues. So you know, now we can call in in real time. You know, I, you know, one of my, you know, favorite, you know, stories from the from the telephone from the payphone era is. You know, my first job, one of my first jobs in construction was I was a bid runner, and we had to go. We did a lot of public bidding, and to do that, and I thought the first time they explained that what I was going to do, I thought, well, this is great. I get to drive out and go turn the bid in. And they said, no, you don't understand. You have to go there. You have to find a public phone, a pay phone. You have to make sure nobody gets on that pay phone. You have to call us 
10 minutes before the bid is due, you have to fill out all the forms, and then you have to run up to the office where they're due, and if you're one minute late, we're going to be ruled out of bidding that job. And I said, wow, really? That's, that's what we, but that's how we did it. And then, you know, a few years later, you know, when, when the, you know, the first, when the cell phone started to come out, when this was, now I'm talking about when you had a mounted cell, a mounted mobile phone in the car, we had one of the owner's cars had the, had the, had the phone, and then if you were the bid runner, you got to drive the car, and you got to sit in the car and do all this work. But now, obviously, with cell phones and all that, much, much easier to do. And same thing, if, if, you know, if your superintendent needed to call the office, there was an emergency, we you know, were missing some material, we're trying to coordinate something. Once again, we had to go find you know, a pay phone to be able to make that call. You know, and, you know, maybe, you know, maybe we had a job trailer, maybe we had a phone hooked up in the job trailer, but a lot of times, unless it was a really large project, we didn't have the luxury of having that. Now, once again, the superintendent pulls the phone out of his back pocket, makes a call to the office, and can communicate that. And think about all the time that that's saving. And, you know, because what if he needed something? He was, he was missing something, piece of equipment didn't show up. Well, we got, you know, half a dozen guys standing around doing nothing. That's not a very efficient way to do things out in the field. So, like I mentioned, you know, we may, may have got to a point where we had a phone in a job trailer. That was somewhat of an improvement. And we could get fax machines. Maybe we had a fax machine in the trailer, and we would, you know, and now we're, you know, once again, I'm old enough to remember, the, you know, the first time we, we got a fax machine. And that was a big deal that in the office we could actually get a fax from somebody. Now, then if we equip them with a fax machine out in the job trailer on a bigger job, we could now at least communicate, you know, via the fax machine. And now we could get timesheets faxed in, you know, urgent communications. We could communicate with change order requests and things like that. And now today we're doing all that you know, remotely via, you know, web application. So it's, it's a, a lot different and a lot more efficient. You know, certainly, certainly then the Internet started to come around, but it was very slow. We all remember the, the dial-up connection and, and the speed. And now, you know, we're talking, you know, the, the, the speed with which we can communicate today is, is, you know, night and day compared to what it was back then. Um, so... And even, you know, so even as email started to come about and things like that, it still wasn't, you know, we couldn't communicate real time. I couldn't, you know, it was still very cumbersome to get a work order and transmit it to my service tech. Where now we can do all these things real time in today's world. You know, we talked about the, you know, the portable phones. I mean, that's the first portable phone that I remember. It looked something like that. Either you had it in a big, you know, uh, pack that you could actually take out of the car, or you had one mounted in the, you know, in the center console of the car, and, the, and, and you could use that. So, but it wasn't, you know, obviously you're not going to stick that in your back pocket, go in on the job site, and, and then be able to pull that out and communicate when you need to. So, you know, we started, and, and now I'll talk a little bit about some of the technology. And here at Computeries, you know, we've been doing accounting and job costing software for the construction industry for over 30 years. And we started, you know, early on, about 14 years ago, 15 years ago now, we started with experimenting with field communication. And so, we, you know, we've kind of seen that there's a lot of different field communications, which we'll talk about. And, you know, our first pass at it, I can just speak from our experience, we started with the Palm Pilot. That was going to be the, you know, that was going to be the rage. And I don't, you know, I don't know. I've got a whole closet full of Palm Pilots. If anybody needs one, we have a whole, you know, to prove that that's where we were going. You know, Palm Pilot, everybody was going to have a Palm Pilot. And then we were going to have modems, and you were going to go out, and you were going to connect the Palm Pilot to your modem, and it was going to use a dial-up connection, and it was going to transmit data. And, and we still, to this day, we we tell, we laugh and tell stories internally. We had, we were going to have a bank of phone modems that were that all these Palm Pilots were connecting to. And we were going to be transmitting data, and the, and the guys in the field, and and we we would go out in some of our early you know calls with some of our uh, customers, and we're going to show them the Palm Pilot. Well, then. We couldn't get a connection, and, and it, we still laugh. You know, we'd be out there, and you'd be holding the Palm Pilot up, trying to get a phone connection, and hopefully it would stay connected to the modem long enough to transmit the time that you were trying to send. So, it, you know, it, it was a little bit, you know, in, in some cases it could be more efficient than filling out the paper timesheet and bringing it to the office, but in a lot of cases it wasn't. Um, and so, like I say, you know, Palm Pilot, you know, that, that fad kind of came and went, and it, you know, it, it was a step in the right direction, but it's still, you know, light years from where we are today. And so, you know, we started there, and now, you know, let's talk a little bit about what, what is available today. And there, there are a lot of different applications today, a lot of, you know, there, there are a lot of web-based uh, and smartphone apps for, for entering time, for doing, 
change orders, for doing daily field reports, for doing service work orders. And, you know, I, you know there, there are a lot of different applications out there. Certainly I'm familiar with the ones that we have here at Computer Ease, but there are a lot of, you know, there are, if you go and do a search for, you know, time applications, I mean, you, you know, page after page after page of very reputable companies that have remote time entry applications. And that's really, I think, where what I've seen working with contractors, and I've worked with thousands of contractors over the years, is it really all started with, with time entry. The first thing we, we wanted to solve as a contractor was how can I get my time from the field to the office without having to bring the timesheets in, fax them in, call them in. And once again, I'll go back to my days in construction where some people could fax them in. The bigger jobs, we had fax machines. The other people had to call them in. So I had to have, you know, somebody in our office had to be on the phone. The, you know, the, the superintendent or the people in the field had to write down their time on a timesheet. Then they had to call it in. Somebody had to write it down on the timesheet in the office so we could then enter it into the system. So we've got all these people touching that and, you know, touching that data. And the more times you touch it, the more room for error. Not to mention how you know what what an unproductive use of time it is. Where now with any of these timekeeping systems that are available, you're going to enter the time, push a button, and it's going to send that time to the office. They can review it. They don't have to rekey it. It, it. You know it will integrate with your accounting system. So there's a lot of things that we can do today that you know we're, we're, that we couldn't. Um, you, know, you can do it. You know from from your pocket. I mean you got a smartphone. Everybody. You know not everybody. Most people are going to have a you know, a smartphone today where you can do email, you can send texts, you can you can make calls, you can download apps, you know, most of the timekeeping softwares, uh, you know, including you know Fieldies, which is which is our timekeeping software, have have apps available where you can download that right onto your smartphone. Others are web based or browser based where you're gonna you know you can use the browser on the smartphone device or the iPad or the tablet and you can log in and enter your time and and submit that uh, to the office. So you know, I think the you know what I've seen you know in the industry you know it started with we needed a way a better way to enter our time that was the first thing we, we wanted to solve as a contractor was I've got a job site I've got 15 guys on the job site and I've got to get their time into the office and I can't you know and and I also from the office side and a lot of times we talk about you know, we certainly talk about increasing productivity in the field but over time and I see that more and more today we also talk about increasing productivity in the office, and that's just as important, you know. And sometimes I, I think we overlook that, but it really is very important that we increase the productivity for the person putting it in in the office. We, we increase the accuracy and the and the the productivity. So instead of people taking days now to prepare payroll, we're doing it in hours. Well, those additional hours that were spent on payroll are now spent on something else that is helping the company become more productive. So. You know, the, the fewer times we have to enter something, more you know, the fewer times we have to touch something, the more productive we become as a company as a whole, and that's what allows us to be more profitable. So, you know, you really want to think about that. You know, it's really a two-sided, you know, a two-sided th uh, issue here that we want to increase the productivity in the field, certainly. We also want to increase the productivity in the office. So why do I want to rekey something that's already been entered one time? And with, you know, if I'm doing that remotely, that allows me to do that. <clears throat> We also talk about the, the the accuracy, and when we were doing a timesheet manually, go back to the manual days, I filled out a timesheet, you know, I'd do it either, maybe if I was lucky, they would do it Friday afternoon, so they might remember what they did that week. Probably they're doing it Monday morning, and that's when they had to turn the time in. So they're manually filling out a timesheet and trying to remember what they did over a week ago and, and trying to be accurate with that. And as we all know, with job costing, I mean, we need to, that the job cost is only as good as the information that we receive. If you're if you're putting all the time to one category or just throwing it somewhere because you have to turn your time in, that's not really helping you analyze that and be and be very productive in that in that analysis. So if we're doing it remotely with the tools available today, why aren't we doing the time daily? At the end of the day, here's what I did. Or during the day, here's what I did. Or even clock in and clock out throughout the day. And you know, I mean imagine Imagine trying to remember, I, mean, I have a hard enough time remembering what I did yesterday. I'm going to have a real hard time telling you what I did a week ago. And, and and that's nothing against anybody. That's just the way, I mean, it's just why would we want somebody to have to think about what they did a week ago and fill out their timesheet today when they can key it in on their, on their iPad, their tablet, their smartphone, and send it to me today. The other benefit to that, depending on the, the tools that you're using, there's a lot of softwares that will then allow you to get a job cost report that has real-time data, even though I'm not going to run payroll until next week, if they send me the time from yesterday 
I have that recorded in my job cost report immediately. So those are some of the things, and, and not not all the tools out there offer that. But they're you know when you're looking at these options, you you want to you know really kind of what what I like to explain to people is you need to understand everything that that you can possibly do, and then it's up to you as a contractor to decide what you know how you can apply that. So you know we we you know there's a lot of different options, and, and every option is not for every, every contractor, but you know, take a look at the bigger picture and look at, you know, what are you trying to accomplish and kind of, you know, I always encourage people, make a list of things that you want to improve on. You know, I, you know, it's taking us, you know, this many days to process payroll. We'd like to cut that down. We'd like to get more accurate job cost reporting. Well, we'd like to get more timely job cost reporting. You know, go through before you, you start investigating some of these things and look at, you know, what you want to do and kind of work it backwards. Well, what is the goal as a company? And now, let, now let's look back and find a solution that will help us achieve that goal. And there's you know there's a lot of a, a lot of good options out there from and and you know you can break it down. You've got time entry related to time entry. You have daily field reports. Most of you or some of you probably have your superintendents or your foreman filling out a daily log or a daily field report. Well, the first thing on the daily field report is who are the employees that worked there that day. So if I've got that you know communicating with my time entry app, well now I've already got part of the daily field report started. It becomes, a, you know, that becomes a byproduct of the time entry and then I can add the additional information to that. You know, today we talk about, you know, things we talk about is, is the cloud, you know, and that's, you know, we talk about effective communication. So, you know, we've been talking a lot about the people in the field communicating to the office. Well now what about when the office itself is remote? Well, I have multiple offices. I have people that need access to the full office. So we're seeing a, a trend where a lot of people are moving are moving towards the cloud, where you know your software becomes accessible from anywhere. And you know, as a company at Computeries, we we were hosting people's application as as far back as maybe 12, 13 years ago. It wasn't referred to as the cloud back then, but it was a you know, we had hosted applications. We would take your Computeries software and we would host it for you. And a lot of companies were doing that back then. Now. You know, now you know, we refer to that. You know, we have cloud applications, and, we, and, and the cloud is kind of the buzzword. But it really it makes your software accessible from anywhere, and that you know. So when you're when you're thinking about improving your field communication, you really need to look at what do I want the field to be able to do. There are you know apps and and the web-based products and things that can communicate with your back office software. So if you just want them to be able to enter time, do a daily field report, complete work orders. You now that that may be that they don't require access to the to the entire software application. If you want them in there doing more than that, then you may want to look at okay, maybe the solution is I need to move my whole environment to the cloud so that everybody has access to the entire environment from anywhere. Um, you know, certainly internet access easier you know today than it ever was before. You know that you know the initial challenge to that was well, if they're in the field but they don't have internet access. You know how's that how's that going to help me? How are they going to gain access to to where I you know where I'm where they need to be? Backup of the software once again when you're in the cloud you can remove some of that infrastructure, and that's you know kind of the trend we're seeing you know industry wide and, and not only here at Computeries but all of our you know other companies similar to ours that we you know we certainly network and and talk to a lot of the other software providers, and you know the the trend. Is really, you know, uh, and if I graph that, you would see a, a tremendous uptick on the move to the cloud. And we, you know, and I'll, I'll use some stats from Computeries. As a whole, we have a little over 10% of our entire customer base in the cloud. Over the last three years of new clients that have come on, almost 50% of them have gone to the cloud. So you can, you, you'll see, you know, quite a trend. We still, you know, because we've been around for 30 years, we still have less, you know, a little less than 10% in total in the cloud. But recent activity is showing us that, okay, the vast majority of the people, and, and that's going up each year, are going to want to go in the cloud from the, from the very beginning. Um, and that's, you know, I, I don't know that, you know, will everybody end up in the cloud? You know, that, that still remains to be seen. But I think um, it, it certainly gives you, you know, and, and I, I talk to people, whether it's existing uh, customers, other contractors, and, you know, I, I, you know, involved in a lot of organizations and talk to a lot of contractors you know every day that, that do different types of work and the remote accessibility is becoming more and more of an issue because I either have remote offices I have people want the ability to work remotely um, you know I, I want to have access to that information and once again that that goes back to that point you really want to start at the end and figure out what are your goals and then work back you know do I want the people in the field just to have access to reports well I can do that without 
maybe necessarily needing to be in the cloud and give them full access. Do I want them to have full access? Do I want to be able to very easily work from home, work remotely? And, and certainly there, you know, you can, you don't need to be in the cloud to do that. You can have that infrastructure built into your network environment. But the cloud removes all, all the need for that. The, the cloud does all that for you. You know, your software is now in the cloud and everyone has access to it that you, that you grant permission to from anywhere, anytime. The, you know, this is really where we are today, you know, anytime, anywhere, whether I'm sitting out here on the, on the top of the mountain with my iPad and I need to log in and, and you know, either enter my time, uh, you know, do a, a change order request, check on a, the status of a submittal, an RFI. I mean, the, the, the reality of today's world is people are working, you know, your, your top people especially, your management people, I mean, you want them to have access anytime, anywhere because you need them anytime, anywhere. And if you need them, you need to have access to them. And it's, you know, I think in today's world, I mean, we just, that, that's the way, you know, it's a lot different than it was, you know, back, back, in, the, back in the day when, you know, number one, they couldn't, they didn't have access to do these things. So when they weren't there, you didn't think about contacting them because you had no choice. But in today's world, we know we can contact them anytime, anywhere. So if I need something, and even if somebody's not, you know, they're, you know, could be, you know, they're on vacation, but you need to have, you know, uh, contact with one of your managers. Well, you now have the ability to do that where before we didn't. So it's, you know, becoming, you know, in today's society, I think, you know, we, we tend to you know, be more accessible as a workforce. So we need to be able to capitalize on that and take advantage of that. And, and give you know give people access to do that. I mean maybe maybe I forgot to do something, you know turn something in, but you know I get home tonight or the next morning I'm out on the job site or wherever I may be. Maybe I'm I'm on vacation tomorrow, but I forgot to send something to the office. Click of a button, I, I've updated that. Where before we didn't have the luxury of doing that. So you know like I said, you really want to think about what you want to accomplish with your field communication. And, and in today's world, everything everything is available immediately if you want it to be and there's you know that you need to think through that and that doesn't make sense for everybody but you know certainly things like the time entry the you know the it really the, the the big areas that we see are the time entry number one we can really streamline and I've seen people streamline the communication and there are, there are everything I mean there are, there are low end high end and any, anything in between you know there there are time apps where you're you know swiping key fobs there are time apps where you're doing it on your phone there are apps where you're, you're you're keying it in. You can code it down to the activity level. Um, that you know, it just depends on how sophisticated you want to get with that. But certainly, you know, what is not efficient is somebody manually filling out a timesheet and somebody manually re-entering that timesheet. That you know, there, there's you know, even if it's just a spreadsheet, they, they can do it in a spreadsheet and email it in. There are ways to integrate that in with your accounting system. So, you know, let, let's think about improving the productivity and the efficiency of entering the time. Then related to that is the daily field reporting, and then when you get into the service world, you know certainly you can you can imagine the increase in production when you can an ASAP service call comes in right now. I can enter that, hit a button, and the service tech has that appear on his device, his or her device. So that you know I think those are the things you know kind of the, the key areas that we see in improving that communication, uh, you know between the field and the office and. And, you know, there's a lot of internal communication. Certainly you can extend this to, you know, access to your customers, vendors, subcontractors. But I think the first thing we need to do is improve the communication between our field personnel and our office personnel. And once we can accomplish that, then, you know, everything else becomes, becomes very easy to do. So, you know, like I mentioned, you know, talk about the, the integration, you know, you think it, you know, think about even pictures. We didn't really talk much about that. But now, not only am I out in the field, can I communicate my time, but we had a problem. I can document the problem. I can take a photo. I can send it to you. You've got that now documented in the office, all at a click of a couple buttons. I mean, you know, I mean, imagine once again going back in the day. I mean, if you if you need to take a picture, you had to take a camera out there and take a picture. Now you just pull out your smartphone, snap a picture, send it to the office, and I've got documentation of the problem that went on on the job site today. Um, so that you know certainly a, a, a big a big plus, um, and you know having that deciding if you want that software to be accessible in the field that's you know certainly what, what we need to be thinking about. And we talked a little bit about the mobile apps you know for service techs, 
um, you know, scanning with today's, you know, with today's technology, you, know, you want to scan inventory items in and out of the service truck or your, your warehouse location. I mean, your, your smartphone becomes the barcode scanner. You don't need to have a separate, you know, scanning device. You use the camera on the phone, scan the barcode, uh, coordinate that with your, with your accounting system. You know, time and attendance, um, and everything from just entering the time to clocking in and clocking out to managing from the GPS on the on the devices where the people actually were when they clocked in and out. So and having the managers have constant updated information, that's the that's the key to me is, you know, I want real time job cost information and, and you know I don't want I don't want to be a week behind or a week plus behind. And then you know traditionally the time gets in, it gets entered, there's a few more days to do that, then processed and then maybe now I can get a job cost report that has up to date information. Or today, I should be able to look at a job cost report, and I have yesterday's hours on that report this morning, and I know I'm on I'm on top of that. I can get real time information if if I want to or if I need to. So the future, you know, where are we going to the future? You know, some of the things. I mean, you look at you know here's you know some statistics for internet device sales and you can see you know over over the years you know personal computers smartphones tablets and if you look at the you know the graph from you know 2010 to and then projected out into 15 and 16 I mean obviously the you know the and I, you know, I look back and I look at you know when we started doing field to office communication was in in 2000 and I look at that I think well no wonder it really didn't work people didn't have devices and that was not you know those that was not the trend then but now Certainly, in the last five years, as we see, it starts to you know the uptick here, and you know pretty substantial graph when you look at the sales of smartphones and tablet devices. So now, what what does that mean? The people in the field have the devices to communicate with, and you know I look at you know and we look at you know those that are of us that are old enough, we remember a time when you didn't have that. The younger generation, they grew up with these devices. I mean, not being connected is not an option for them. I mean, they've never been in a world where they weren't connected. So why wouldn't we want to capitalize on that? You're, you know, you're, you know, and, and the older generation, I think, is certainly, you know, adapting to that. But the younger generation, your younger superintendents, foremen, project managers, th this is nothing. This is nothing new to them. They've been connected, you know, pretty much their entire lives. So that, you know, I think we really need to capitalize on that and use that to our advantage as a contractor and get that, you know, get that real time communication and, and, and take advantage of that. You know, and certainly, you know, we're going, you know, who knows where technology will go. Um, you know, certainly we're going to go to, you know, even even things that we, you know, we, we have. I don't know what the next trend in technology will be, but there will be things that we haven't even thought of yet that will be coming out that we're, are just going to enhance the remote communication experience. You know, and, and like we mentioned, the cloud. I mean, the cloud is going to keep growing. Certainly, I mean, you know, not uh, you know, although more and more, you know, pretty much, you know, I know just from our experience, you know, our cloud users pretty much have almost all the functionality that they would have in the office. Sometimes even better functionality with the with, with the remote accessibility. But uh, you know, pretty much anything you could do with a, an installed desktop application, you can now do in the cloud environment. Um, you know, I mean, more and more contractors, I think, are going to move there. I mean, that's certainly the trend we're seeing. And, and it's something, obviously, as a, as a software developer, we, we have to pay attention to those trends. And if people weren't moving there or wanting to go there, there wouldn't be any need for us to be there. So we're, you know, kind of our, you know, the, the industry drives us to where we need to go in development. When we, when we hear people wanting to go there, people moving there, well, obviously, you know, we're going to listen to those needs and go there. And I think everybody, you know, everybody I see in our industry, all of our, you know, competitors that, you know, we certainly have, you know, friendly competitors that and we, you know, we network and we, we talk amongst each other and we all are hearing the same thing. Everybody is saying, yeah, I mean, and it's not because we as a software development world want to go there. It's because the construction industry tells us we need to go there, which and that and that's what was driving the, uh, you know, the push to, to be in the cloud. So, you know, I mean, you know, I think eventually and it just makes sense. I mean, you, you, you go, you know, it's kind of the, you know, it's kind of, in some ways, you know, you went through the whole PC era, and everybody, you know, you went from mainframes to PCs, and now we're kind of going back to a central, you know, a central location again, and, and almost, you know, where the the installed application on the PC is is not really going to be, you know, it's not going to be something that you know may be there long term. So, you know, something we certainly need to look at, and it's where you know where technology and industry is headed. 
So we got, you know, I think certainly a few minutes left here. If uh, in your go-to webinar box there, there's certainly the ability to type in questions. So if anybody has any questions, I'd be glad to address those. Um, if you, like I said, if you just type that in, uh, I can certainly read the question and uh, for the audience and, and be able to uh, you know, hopefully answer that. But so if anybody has any questions, we'll be glad to glad to hear. All right. Well, no, no questions this morning. Well, I certainly uh, want to thank everybody for uh, for attending this morning. Certainly, for uh, more information, you can visit uh, www.aci-construction.org, or you can for more information about Computerese, you can visit www.computerese.com. If you have any questions for me, I'd be more than happy to answer those. You can email me at John M at Computerese.com, or certainly call us here locally at 513-481-5800. So thanks again, everybody, and certainly thanks to ACI for allowing us to put on the webinar this morning.